Well, what the heck is happening to NFTs right now? Bitcoin hit 25k and now we suddenly have Bitcoin ordinals, blur airdrop that everybody's talking about and then OpenSea losing its dominant position as the NFT marketplace. What? It's been quiet in the NFT space for quite some time. However, since this year, events started happening and they started happening and dividing and polarizing the community, both Bitcoin community, unsurprisingly, and NFT communities into different uh, camps, so to say. Let's start with Bitcoin Ordinals and then I will tell you about the war between Blur IO and their airdrops and how they are trying to get the users from OpenSea. Today, February the 21st, 2023, marks one month since the launch of Bitcoin Ordinals. Or you can also call them Bitcoin NFTs in a way, but they are not exactly the same. And uh, that's despite being so young, there has been many of them. According to Dune Analytics, as of now when I'm recording, it's 150k ordinals. And it's going to be much more when I release this video and this is just keeps growing. So what are they? Bitcoin is like a granddad of all cryptocurrencies and it's, uh, well, we don't even expect it to be up to date with all the technical innovations that other blockchains are offering. And we just watch over it in case it falls so we can uh, help it back up basically and that's it but ordinals changed it ordinals are a new financial use case for bitcoin and there has been a long debate of uh, its purpose as a technology and uh, this debate in the bitcoin community basically has been since its launch but the, the primary community, everybody just th thought that, okay, Bitcoin is a storage of value, probably transfer, but then with five to seven transactions per second, it's not really much of a transfer or medium, so to say. So people just use it for storage or as an investment asset to just keep it. With ordinals, you can store actual images, actual videos, and even music on the Bitcoin blockchain itself as long as it fits into the size of a block, and that is 4 megabytes. And recently, the, one of the biggest blocks has been out on Bitcoin, and that was 3.9 megabytes. And I'm just thinking of the, the issue of block space that might arise in the future and the state size of Bitcoin, because it has been an issue for Ethereum. Their history can be traced to quite some time ago, when um, the op return function appeared with the update to Bitcoin. The op return function allowed for outside services to be linked to Bitcoin block space. However, that was not inscription on the blockchain itself. The ordinals were made possible thanks to the Taproot update that was actually not as recent as the ordinals are. It was uh, in late 2021 and uh, the ordinals emerged in January of 2023. The way they work at a high level is by repurposing Satoshis, that is the smallest value of Bitcoin you can get, one millionth of Bitcoin, as NFTs. So they use a segregated transaction witness window in the block space and they put the image in there. And then they're also using tab scripts that were made possible in the Taproot update. While it's quite fair to compare ordinals to NFTs, they work in a slightly different manner. So most NFTs are smart contracts that have links to external websites. And those websites, if they go down, the uh, NFT kind of stops existing because yes, you don't have it anymore, it's not on chain. And ordinals aimed to solve the issue by being fully on chain. So ordinals actually means that the the ordinal position. Ordinal position is just like the number, like the first, the second, the third of the individual satoshis that have NFTs or images or videos or whatever inscribed to them. It might seem like an unnecessary technicality that I told you that, but it's actually quite important because they are eating ordinals, are eating block space, and if they are eating block space, they are raising the transaction fees. And that's why most people are raging against them. People are concerned that this will lead to the bloat of the network and this will make it unworkable. Not that it, not that five to seven transactions were still like good for transfer of value, but it was something. And with Bitcoin ordinals, it's now even harder to do and commit any transactions of Bitcoin. But to be honest, that's nothing new. People have always been concerned about high gas fees on Bitcoin. And uh, they are even higher now. And the other point of view is that if you can pay the gas fees, then what's the problem that you are the one who is using the network? You are paying for your usage and you are ready to pay. Therefore, you can use it. It's a distributed permissionless network. That is the point of it, right? 
And here we come to the highlight of the debate, the epitome of debate that is just, again, reinforced with ordinals. Are we using Bitcoin as a secure distributed database storage, secure storage for anything, or are we trying to make it a payment system? Let me know what you think of Bitcoin ordinals. Are you hoping they would disappear in the future as soon as possible when the hype goes down? Or are you already getting yourself as many as you can because you're hoping to resell them or you just like them? Let me know.